Welcome to Employment Hour in 30. I'm John Scholes, my co-host Lior Samfiru from the Samfiru to Market Law Firm. Discovering the workplace rights you didn't know you had. That is the whole reason why we do this show. What happens in your workplace, how to handle severance and your boss and everything under that rather wide umbrella. Lior, uh, today we'll get to a lot of things, things your employee won't tell you. We'll talk about how to respond to a demotion and so much more, including the severance pay calculator. Now, we always start every show with the week that was. The phone number, by the way, one 821 5900 We'll take some calls from our one-hour radio show, which, by the way, if you want to find employmenthour.com, you'll find a station near you that handles that show, carries that show and you can follow us there as well. So week that was, what is happening? Well, John, it's, it's uh, been a busy week, actually. Yep. Spoke with a lot of people. You know, we're here once a week on TV talking uh, uh, and, and to our viewers about workplace rights, but I'm in my office every single day answering calls, responding to emails, helping people navigate the maze of employment law rights and obligations. And, and there's so many questions that people have. I get questions from anything from records of employment to severance to harassment to human rights. So there's, it's endless. And that's why we're here, to finally demystify and educate people on their workplace right so if you have any questions any problems give me a call at the office email me we'll get we're gonna give you my contact information a bunch of times throughout the show today don't hesitate and hopefully throughout the show we can educate you on, on some of those rights and to get us revved up and started the week that was let me tell you about a matter that came across my desk just a few days ago so I, resp I received a call from a, a lady who had been off for work on a disability leave for about a year a year and a half I think it's been she had been through a car accident and she, she went on a disability leave well, everything was fine until she got a note from her insurance company saying, we think you can go back to work, the long-term disability insurance company. She was involved in, in dealing with them, and, and uh, four or five weeks later, uh, as she's still fighting with the insurance company, she gets a letter from her employer saying, oh, we understand that five weeks ago, you were cut off by the insurance company because you're able to come back to work, but because you didn't come back to work, we consider you to have resigned. Wow. You're done. And she was extremely upset. Not only is she getting cut off the insurance company, now her employer says she doesn't have a job. And all the while, John, her doctor is still telling her, well, no, you can't work. So that's when she called me. And what I told her is very, very simple. It doesn't matter what the insurance company says. If your doctor says you can't work, then you can't work. And your employer can't say that you've resigned. He can't let you go. There can't be a punishment or a penalty in, uh, of any kind. What this employer did is it jumped the gun. It didn't find out from her, are you really able to come back to work? What does your doctor say? It considered her to have resigned, which she did not. So this makes it a wrongful dismissal. Not only is she, of course, owed severance because she didn't resign, this is potentially a human rights issue as well because she was let go because of her medical condition. So that's wrong and an employer should never do that. An employer should never consider you to have resigned just because you can't work. And beyond that, John, the other thing I'm going to be doing with this lady is I'm going to help her and my colleagues are going to be helping her dealing with the insurance company, the one that should not have cut her off. Long-term insurance companies often cut people off before they're ready to go back to work because they're in the business of getting you off their sure, payroll. Of course. So that's what we're going to be doing, helping her with the insurance company and, of course, getting her the compensation that she's owed from her employer. And if you're in that situation, if your long-term disability insurer says you should go back to work before you're ready, if your employer gives you a hard time, punishes you, punishes you terminates you, considers you to have resigned, you give me a call right away. Does her doctor or at least her medical team not have the trump card in all of this? All of this. It trumps the insurance company. It trumps what the employer thinks. That's the trump card. If you have a doctor that says you can't work, then you can't work. That's not debatable. That's not negotiable. The doctor trumps. The employer has to do what the doctor says, as well as the insurance company. And I know we've mentioned this before in the past. The, the employer is allowed to ask prognosis, not diagnosis, correct? The employer is allowed to find out how long you're going to be off, uh, what limitations you have. They're not allowed to know what your medical condition is. Are you suffering from a bad back or depression or, or cancer? None of that is important, or not, not that important, it's not proper information for the employer to ask, and if they do, that's wrong, that's illegal, you contact me. The email is help at employmenthour.com or 1-855-821-5900 is the phone number. All calls, of course, are confidential, but some viewers, some callers like to have their stuff played on the air, so we'll use it, we'll get to a call now, and we'll get you to comment on it. Mr. Sanfiru, I was discharged from my job of six years about eight months ago. The severance package I received was a little low, and I brought it up to the person who was presenting it to me, and they told me that because it was considered to be a layoff, that the severance would be lower, and whatever else was owed, I could actually recoup from the government through the employment insurance. Is that accurate? 
Wow, John, another way yeah. for employers to say, oh, wait, we don't really have to pay you your full severance. So, so let's, let's be very clear. If you lost your job, I don't care what you call it, termination, a layoff, a separation, a departure, you're owed severance. You don't get to pay less severance by calling it a layoff. So if your employer decides you're not working here anymore, you're owed your full severance. The fact that you may or may not get EI and usually you would, does not reduce the amount of severance that your employer has to pay you. That, to me, is just simply a way to try to convince someone to accept completely inadequate severance. Remember, your severance is based on your age, your position, and the length of your employment. Whether or not the employer called it a layoff is irrelevant. Whether you get EI is irrelevant. So no, do not believe that. Please contact me. Let's talk about it. Let's make sure you get the severance that you're owed. Go to severancepaycalculator.com to find out what that is. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, but absolutely, what this employer did is misleading. It's wrong, and the employee should never, ever believe that. I mean, for, first of all, is it, is it not correct that you'll get your severance and EI? They're not, they're cons they're not consecutive. You don't do it at the same time. They right. have to follow each other. Right? Well, they are consecutive, right? So usually you get your EI once your severance runs That's out. Right. So yeah. if you've received six months of severance, your EI is going to kick in at that point, and you can get it for, for up to a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't have EI and severance for the same period of time. But just because you get EI doesn't mean your employer is going to say, well, all we have to do is pay you the difference. Absolutely they not. Okay, credit. The employer has to pay full severance. Doesn't matter. You could choose not to apply to EI. That's your business. Your employer has to pay you your full severance, full stop, always. A few different ways to ask questions. Help at employmenthour.com. The phone call, of course, 1 855 821 5900. There is also terminationquestions.com. You ask your question, there's a drop down menu. I, I can almost guarantee at this point, after this many years, it has been answered and uh, you can check out all the answers. If not, leave it there. Lior, a member of his team, will get to it and answer your questions. Again, terminationquestions.com. Got one for you here. Lior says, after working hard uh, over 22 years to rise through the company to a middle management position, my boss emailed me and asked me to move down a rung to a supervisor job. He suggests that, uh, given my age, I'm 62, I should be working a less stressful job. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, if I don't accept, he says they will have a reasonable cause to fire me and I won't be eligible for any severance. Should I accept the offer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you don't even practice employment, like you just pretend on no. TV, but you know what I mean? And you already know that this is ridiculous. And, you know, it, it's, it makes me shake my head. I don't even know where to begin with this. So let's, let's begin with the easy stuff. And that is that uh, the demotion. So can the company say, well, you're in a manager position, we're going to reduce you down to a different level position? The answer is no. Your employer does not have a right to demote you, and if the employer does anyway, you may have the option to treat that as a constructive yeah. dismissal, which means you can leave with your full severance. An employer does not have a right to demote you, usually, uh, unless, of course, you sign an agreement that gives them that power. So that's the beginning. Well, what flows from that is that if you refused for the, motion, the demotion, of course there's no cause to terminate your employment. You're simply standing up for the rights that the law says you have already. Your employer can't punish you because uh, he, the employer is trying to do something that's illegal and you're simply standing up for your rights. Nonsense. But there's another aspect to this. If his employer is telling him, well, because of your age, you should take this other position, well, that's age discrimination. That's a human rights violation. That's illegal. They can't do that. It's as simple as that. So if his employer wants to take him down a notch to a different position because of his age, it's illegal. He can and he should refuse. Uh, why would he ever accept a law, again, unless he likes the job, but why would he ever accept a lower level position? And if his employer does let him go because of that, not only, of course, is he owed his full severance, mm -hmm. potentially owed human rights damages as well. So I want our viewers to remember a demotion is something your employer can't impose. You don't have to accept it, and, and I would say shouldn't accept. And of course, if you're mistreated or are demoted or put in a different position because of your age, that's age discrimination. That's illegal. And if that happens, please give me a call. We'll take a short break and get to the severance pay calculator and lots more right here on Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact. Over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. 
Lost your job? Employment law myth number seven. Involving an employment lawyer is expensive. Fact, in most cases, fees are nominal and the employer will ultimately cover the fees. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Welcome back to Employment Hour in 30. Again, the contact anytime, 1-855-821-5900. It is help at employmenthour.com. We mentioned it. Let's get to it. Very important tool. Been around for four, four and a half years. And I mean literally hundreds of thousands of people have tried this. Severancepaycalculator.com. Actually, the number, John, is now over 400,000 wow. people have successfully used the severance calculator. And, and here's what it is for those that have, uh, haven't seen us before and need a bit of a refresher. The severance calculator, as the name suggests, is a tool that I created almost five years ago now, to help anyone find out how much severance they are actually owed. The real number, right. not what the company wants to pay, not what you may read on some message board online, the real number, what the law says you should have. So you go to severancepaycalculator.com, again it's severancepaycalculator.com, and you answer three simple questions. What is your age, what is the length of your employment, and what job did you have? You just simply pick it from a drop-down menu, and then you're done. It's going to tell you whether you're owed six months severance, 24 months severance, 18, whatever the actual number is. It's accurate, it's easy to use, it's free, it's anonymous. You don't have to put in your name, you don't have to put in the company's name. And it's the easiest way you can find out immediately, right now, on the spot, takes seconds, how much severance you're actually owed. If you use that, you will not be taken advantage of. You will not find out a year later, wait a second, when I lost my job, they owed me another $75,000. I didn't realize that. And because of that, now I have to live with myself not having accepted that money. So it's a great tool, even if you haven't lost your job, but are worried, maybe you're hearing some rumblings that the company is letting people go. Go to severancepaycalculator.com, and if you think, well, I know exactly what severance is. It's a week per year, it's two weeks per year, so I know exactly what it is. I don't need the severance calculator. Go to severancepaycalculator.com. Spoiler alert, it's not a week's pay. It's not two yeah. weeks' pay. It's a lot more. You don't believe me? Check it out. You'll be surprised. Someone's going to be surprised when they try it and see the little number that's on their severance letter and the big number that's on the severance pay calculator, and they're going to, they're going to cry false. Not happening. Something's yeah. wrong with the system. They're going to think there's a bug. Maybe there's some sort of a virus. It can't be that my employer says I get six weeks severance and your severance calculator says eight months. Well, no, there's no bug in the system. There's no virus. There's no corrupting the system. The severance calculator is accurate. The reason why your severance offer is much lower is because most are. Over 90% of people receive and accept less yep. severance than they're owed. Uh, and there's two reasons for that, John. Either the employer itself that's paying you severance doesn't know any better, or more likely the employer hopes that you don't know any better and that you will, you will accept inadequate severance. Well, if you're watching us right now, now you do know better. Don't let that happen to you. Don't accept inadequate severance. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Let's get through a quick scenario and uh, we'll run through the metric and uh, see what you come up with this one. Uh, it says, I've been working as a private school teacher for just over three years since turning 35. I haven't received any uh, reprimands the entire time. Uh, I've just been told the school doesn't need my services anymore with no explanations. I'm pretty sure that's a wrongful dismissal. Uh, can you help me get my job back? You know, I get questions like that very often, John, and, and people often, when they lose their job, they feel that they've been wrong, they feel that they've done nothing wrong, so why am I losing my job? And what right. they really want is for that job loss to never have happened. They want their job back. Unfortunately, in almost every situation, the law doesn't provide a mechanism to get your job back. There's no way to make the company take you back. Now, if they choose to, fine, but that's almost never going to happen. What the law provides instead is proper severance. So a company can let you go if you, even though you've done nothing wrong, but they have to pay full severance. So oftentimes when people call me about getting their job back, I have to focus their attention on the issue of severance because that's the only thing the law can do. So let's run the metrics for this particular person that, that uh, contacted me uh, and, and let's see what the numbers uh, add up for, for her. So as a private school teacher, 38, yeah, 38 years old, uh, three years uh, of service, I picked a salary, I said $51,000 at random. Well, someone in her situation would be owed anywhere from three to four months pay. Okay, John, so that's twelve to $17,000 assuming that compensation. So that's what the law provides. And if someone like her may be offered zero, may be offered one or two weeks pay. Probably at best. At best. Yeah. And so that could be a difference of 
twelve, fifteen thousand dollars, and this is only a three years of service. What do you think would have happened if she had twenty-three years of service? So that's what the severance calculator would show us. That's an example of how it works and why it works. It's as simple as that. And if you're sitting there, you have a great job, you're happy about it. Check it out as well. Inform yourself. Just in the event that this year, next year, five years from now, you lose your job, you want to know. You want to have a sense of what you're actually owed so that you're not surprised when you're staring at that severance letter, severancepaycalculator.com. We had a lot of phone calls on our radio show. Again, employmenthour.com. You want to find a station near you that carries the one-hour show. Been doing that for about four, four and a half years, almost five now. ton of phone calls. A lot of it's interesting. We'll get to another call here, and I'll let you run through it and answer it. I was employed 23 years for a very large multinational corporation. Recently, my work went overseas. I was given about 10 and a half months severance, and I know that I can get a lot more if I use a service like yours. My uh, question is, what is the likelihood of a future employer finding out that I took my old employer to court for more money? Yeah, common fear. Very question. Yeah, if, if I pursue more severance, is that going to come out? Is my future employer going to find out about it? Am I going to be blackballed somehow? A legitimate uh, concern, so let me address that. Well, first of all, in, in terms of severance, if he was offered 10 and a half months of pay after 23 years of service, that's about 50 cents on the dollar. He probably, uh, probably would be somewhere north of 20 months pay. That's what the law provides for him. So that's a wrongful dismissal. So yes, he's, his instincts that he thinks he's owed more are completely correct. He is owed a lot more. So now let's address the second part. And, and if he pursues this, is it going to help the, against him? Well, I'll start by saying that people should never feel bad or guilty by pursuing what the law says they should have. If all you ever want is what the law says you should have, then you should get it. I don't decide what the law is. You don't decide if the law is the way it is. You should get what that is. Now, the beauty of employment disputes is that almost all of them, 98% of them, 99% of them, resolve, number one, very quickly. And number two, don't have to go to court. They're not even within 100 feet of a courtroom. We have a, a resolution, a settlement that's quick, that's confidential, and no one knows about it. There's no database you can go to find out, oh, wait a second, John Scholes sued his former employer. You can't do that. So is your former employer going to know about it? Only if someone, or if, is your new employer going to know about it? Only if someone tells them. They can't find out. They can't go on Google and, and look up that, uh, that issue. So you never have to worry about those things. Get what you're owed. Support your family. Make sure that you have the compensation that you need to carry you through to that next job. Don't worry about other consequences because in almost every case, there are none. You want to find out what that should be? Again, severancepaycalculator.com. Email us help at employmenthour.com. And that phone call, your phone call, 1-855-821-5900. Still to come, we'll uh, tell you things your employer won't tell you. Dealing is, uh, with a demotion and maternity leave mishaps as well. That's all coming up after a short break. Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Employment law myth number nine. I can just call the labor board instead of a lawyer. Fact, the labor board cannot help an employee get their full entitlements. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. Severancepaycalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. Severancepaycalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact, over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Welcome back to Employment Hour in 30. The number anytime. Get a hold of Lior, a member of his crew at the firm, 1-855-821-5900. It is help at employmenthour.com through email. And we did it last break. We'll talk about it again. Severancepaycalculator.com. Find out exactly what that severance offer should be owed. Things your employer won't tell you. This list we could do a show for seven hours and not get <laughs> through them all. But we'll... Uh, We'll hash our way through a few of these and let you break them down. Number one, uh, you are likely owed more severance than you're offered. Yeah. Yeah. And, and things that your employer won't tell you, John, but hey, we will. That's right. So, yeah, the, the big thing, the, the thing that really, you know, where the money is, if you, if you know what I mean, is with respect to severance. Oftentimes, your employer is going to tell you, oh, you're only owed as much as we've offered, or we've given you a good offer, or there's a rule of a, a week's pay per year of service. Your employer won't in 90% of cases actually tell you how much severance you're actually owed because it's in their interest to try to pay you as little as possible. So uh, people get surprised by that. They think, well, how can my employer tell me that this is all I'm owed if it's not? 
Well, let's forget about that. Your employer has to and will look after itself. It's your job as the individual that may have lost his or her job to look, look after yourself. You're the only one looking after yourself. It's in your, it's your interest and it's your job to find out how much you're owed. So don't rely on the employer. If you do, you're going to lose tens of thousands like so many people do. Call me. Go to the severance calculator. Uh, find out. You don't like me again. Go to another employment lawyer. That's fine. But you have to get proper advice as to the amounts owed. How many times, John, have I had calls, emails from people that want my help, but they've already accepted the severance package. Now they realize they owed another, I don't know, $50,000 and they want my help, and I say, I can't help you. Yeah, you signed the paper giving up $50,000. I can't help you at that point. So you know, your employer is not gonna tell you. It's not your employer's job to inform you. You have to inform yourself about that severance. That's why we're here. We're making it as easy as possible. No one should now say, oh, I didn't know. If you watch us, if you know someone that lost their job, you have to tell them. Severancepaycalculator.com, call me, call another employment lawyer. Don't ever accept less than your own. Things your employer won't tell you, but we will. Next one is how a maternity leave affects your job. That's right. A lot of times employers may uh, tell you things that are wrong when, it's, when it comes to maternity leave. We only have to keep your job for a certain period of time. We have to keep your job, but it doesn't have to be the same job. Or uh, if, if, we, if it's difficult to take you back, then we don't have to take you back. There's a lot of misconception and, and half-truths when it comes to that. So let me tell you what it is and how it is. If you are on a maternity leave, your employer has to take you back to the same job you have at the same compensation at the end of your maternity leave. They can't decide that they want to put someone else in that job. They can't decide that they like the replacement better. They can't decide to give you a different job or to pay you less just because you're away. They can't decide to withhold bonuses. Uh, and they also can't decide six months before you're ready to come back to work that they're not going to have a job for you six months later. So it's very, very simple when it comes to maternity leave. Your employer cannot and should not do anything to you. As simple as that, John. 1-855-821-5900 anytime or help at employmenthour.com. Talking about the things your employer won't tell you. Probably not, but we will. This one, you could do a whole show. You could open up a whole firm with this one. That <laughs> is, uh, you're not really an independent contractor. My gosh, John, this is such a, such a huge, huge topic. I could spend all day just talking to people that believe they're independent contractors and they're not. So let's make this very clear and, and very brief. Uh, most of the times when someone is mis or is classified as an independent contractor, they're not. The law decides if you're an employee or an independent contractor. You don't decide. The company you work for doesn't decide. It doesn't matter if you sign the piece of paper that says you're a contractor. It doesn't matter if you do your own taxes or, or even if you have your own company. If you work for a company consistently, regular hours for a period of time, in most cases the law would deem you to be an employee. Remember, substance over form. If you look like an employee and act like an employee, you are an employee. It doesn't matter what else you say or what else someone else says. Now, that's important in many respects, but it's especially important when it comes to severance. If you lost your job, quote unquote, as an independent contractor, the company may say, well, you don't get any severance because you're an independent contractor. But if the law considers you to be an employee, of course you get severance. You get full severance. So it can be the difference between getting nothing to getting, I don't know, $100,000, depending on your compensation, et cetera. So if you're questioning whether you're an independent contractor, don't question. You're an employee. No one that is an actual independent contractor questions their status. If you're not sure, it means you're an employee. Give me a call if you're not sure, certainly if you lost your position. If you know someone, your neighbor across the street uh, who's an independent contractor, lost his or her job, tell them to call me. They're probably owed severance. And again, once they accept something, once they move on, it may be too late to do anything about it. So give me a call. Because if it's really that simple, then nobody in this country would ever hire anybody. Everyone Absolutely. would be an independent contractor. Yes. Why would, would we have, have why would we have employees? Right? right? Why? Well, you know, I have a staff of 50 in my office. Why am I hiring them as employees? Because uh, I'm a glutton for punishment? No. It's because the law says I have to. I could call them something else, but it's not going to change what they are. Again, law decides, not you, not me, not the company. The law takes care of it. Things your employer will not tell you, but we will in this show. You get uh, severance even if you're, or at least overtime, if you're on salary. Yes. Uh, oftentimes an employer may say to you, well, you're on salary, you don't get overtime. Well, let's be very clear about this. You get overtime even if you're on a salary. And overtime is calculated as uh, time and a half for hours over 44 hours a week. It's not calculated daily, it's calculated weekly. So how does it work if you're on salary? Well, we take your weekly salary, we'll divide that by 44, and that gives us an hourly rate. Pretty simple. Time and a half, 
is what you get over 44 hours a week. Now, there's some positions that are exempt from overtime. Managers, for example, uh, are exempt from overtime. Uh, certain other professionals, doctors, accountants, etc. IT. Uh, IT people are exempt from, from overtime. But most other positions get overtime even if you are on a salary. So don't assume ever uh, that you don't get it. If you work extra hours, over 44 hours a week, even if you are on salary, you get overtime. One more point on this before we move on to a phone call. That is the things your employer won't tell you, but we will. Uh, if the business is sold, you don't have to accept a job with the owner, the new owner. Very important when it comes to sale of a business, John. Uh, and, and oftentimes people believe that if my business that I'm working for is sold, I have to take a job. Well, let's make it very clear. You, you don't have to. Now, if you don't take a job with the company that's buying the business, you still get severance. Now, in terms of how much severance depends on the reason right. why you didn't accept the job. If you have a good reason, maybe the job is different. Maybe the job pays you less. It's not comparable. Or the move in the company. Yeah, or now you have to travel a lot further. Exactly. Exactly. Then guess what? You get your full severance because you had a good reason not to accept that job offer. What happens if you don't have a good reason? You know what? I just don't want to work for this new company. I'm going to go back to school or spend more time with my family. I don't have a great reason other than good I just... Good time to leave. It's my time. Yeah. You know, everyone has to do that at some point. Well, at that point, because you don't have a good reason, you still get severance. You're just not going to get your full severance. You're going to get less. Either way, you get severance. Now, if you do accept a job with the company, your seniority carries through, which is a very good thing, but you don't have to accept the job. And if you're not sure whether you have a good reason, how much severance you should be getting, and the business is being sold, call me. Call me before you accept the job offer from the new company. Once you accept it, you can't go back on it. Give me a call when that happens, but you don't have to accept the job with the buyer. 1-855-821-5900 is the number to get a hold of the firm, Lior or any of his other lawyers at the firm as well. Help at employmenthour.com, and we do a one-hour radio show. You want to go to employmenthour.com to find out where you can catch that show. ton of phone calls weekly, as it has been for years. We'll get to another phone call and, uh, and break it down. I got terminated last November. The manager I reported to called me in on a Monday. Lo and behold, coming into the office, our HR director there, the manager I reported to were there. It didn't take long to figure out what was happening. Mm -hmm. Gave me a letter. It was terminated instantly. They paid me four weeks plus whatever vacation pay I had. I asked them why I was laid off, and I absolutely got no answer whatsoever. <laughs> it's still a mystery. Yeah, uh, this is a very common call, uh, and, and you can hear kind of the confusion in his voice. I, I did nothing wrong. They let me go, and I even asked them why. They didn't tell me. So now I'm out of a job, and I don't know why. Right. My gosh, what a, what a, a bad way to feel, and, and you know, also a bad way to handle an employee, especially if you know, a good, loyal employee. Uh, so I think that's wrong from a, an, a moral and an ethical standpoint, but from a legal standpoint, John, the, the reality is that your employer can let you go at any time and pretty much for any reason as long as severance is yep. paid. So your employer may say, you know what, John, uh, I want to hire someone and pay them less than you. That's not a nice reason to do let it. you go, but they can do it. Uh, they can say, I want to hire my cousin instead of you. Again, not a very nice thing to do, but they can do that as long as proper severance is paid. So this particular caller says that he was offered four weeks pay. Now, I don't know anything about his situation. I don't know how long he had worked there, the job, his age, but I can tell you that unless he's very, very young, unless he's worked there for a couple of months, and unless he has a very junior position, he's probably going to be owed a lot more than four weeks pay. I don't know if it's two months or 24 months. It does depend on, on those factors. But it's going to be extremely rare that he only gets four weeks. So he's probably been wrongfully dismissed in the sense that he's owed a lot more severance. So we, we have to kind of get our mindset differently or change our mindset that, yes, I lost my job. It's not fair, but it's legal. Now I have to look after my severance. That's what he has to call me to make sure that he gets all the severance that he's owed, not just the four weeks that he was offered. A lot of good stuff for another week. Again, severancepaycalculator.com. Not only when you lose your job, anytime, check it out. Find out what your severance rights should be. 1-855-821-5900. Email help at employmenthour.com or employmenthourtv.ca. Till next time, Employment Hour in 30. Captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact, over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first.